the calling came because I believed that in some way I could foster better human relations through interreligious dialogue. At that time, I didn't know I was coming to Georgetown. I didn't know that's what I would be doing, but it was, it was prophetic. I said to the uh, president of the university, why do you need one rabbi if you don't have any Jewish students here? He said, Rabbi, what makes you think that I want a rabbi to come to Georgetown to teach Jewish students? And the president of the university looked at him and said, oh, I, I don't need a rabbi for them so much. I want you to be a rabbi for the entire student body. And that was a challenge that Rabbi White could never turn down. Like Jews, the Jesuits value education as a worshipful experience. The Jesuits pursued education for the sake of education rather than for any pragmatic purpose. So I felt very, very much at home in that respect. The word rabbi means teacher. It doesn't mean officiant. It means teacher. And I loved the fact that I was teaching classes which consisted of diverse religious groups. Harold really didn't see any differences in people and didn't feel that religion should separate people, but felt that uh, beliefs can be combined, that common ground could always be found. Students would call me father. At first, I said, well, call me rabbi, but they would continue to call me father. One student came up to me and called me rabs, and that's a name that has uh, persisted to this day. He was famous for the high holiday services he conducted in Gaston Hall. He used to fill Gaston Hall a couple of times a day on each holiday. It was really quite remarkable. One thing I would emphasize also is his role in helping to create the program for Jewish civilization here at Georgetown. He was a master bridge builder. He knew everybody. You know, you, you play a, a game in, in college, Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Um, with Rabbi, it was like two degrees. My first summer at Georgetown, I actually lived in his house when he spent his summers then at Martha's Vineyard. So it was me and his five cats. I would get calls regularly, collect calls from penitentiaries in Georgia, and Washington, D.C., and all over the country, people wanting to talk to Rabbi White, which made me mostly terrified, but also gave me this new side of Rabbi White's life. He was a man who championed those frequently overlooked by society. First rabbi to do interfaith marriages here in the Washington area. My wife's not Jewish, and he did some of the counseling of us before we, were, we got married. He was ahead of his time. Harold had a way of just reaching out and resonating with your heart. He knew me better than I knew myself. When I uh, ran into him again after some years of not seeing him, he looked at me and said, something's troubling you. And I said, how do you know that? I haven't seen you in a decade. He said, I know that, come talk to me. And I went and talked to him. And I mentioned, yeah, I was unhappy with my career. And he said, I have an answer for you. He said, come work for me. I said, you don't need a lawyer, because I was a lawyer. He said, I don't want a lawyer, I want you. And that conversation changed my life. One of my favorite lines is from Robert Browning's Rabbi Ben Ezra, rolled away along with me, the best is yet to be, the last for which the first was made. I think young and I surround myself with young people. Uh, and I always think that the best is yet to be. In May, we had this wonderful celebration of Rabbi's life. And you could see him kind of bopping along with the, with the music. I actually videotaped a small part at the end. And when I went to see him before he passed, when I started playing that video, his left hand was tapping his thigh to the beat of the music. And it was just, it was such a special moment. Um, and one that made you remember <clears throat> what motivated the rabbi. 
and the motivation was joy. Don't think of upward mobility as a better job, a better car, a better salary. Think of upward mobility as a spiritual thing. Think of upward mobility as the ability to get in touch with yourself and somehow get in touch with those divine sparks within you so that they become a fire and transform your life.